Welcome to part two of building a home studio on a budget. My name is Douglas and I'm excited to have you along for this little build. Today I'm going to be building my studio desk. So in the last video, if you haven't watched that, go check it out. Links in the description below or up here and check that out. I talk about kind of my plans for this space. This is going to be my home studio. I'm going to be documenting my whole process and excited to share that with you guys. And I mentioned in there that I might be building my own studio desk. So between now and then, I built an office desk out of a butcher block top and black pipe. And it worked really well. I love the look. It's a little bit industrial look, but it, it works great. So I said, you know what? I'm going to use that as the basis for my studio desk. So what I've got here is one inch black pipe and black pipe fittings, and then a 74 inch wide, 25 inch deep and one and a half inch thick butcher block top. So that's going to be the frame and the main top to my desk. And then I'm going to build a wire tray that's going to hang below the desk. And then a couple of movable stands that are going to sit on top of the desk for my screen and my studio monitors. So that's going to be a separate video where I kind of build the accessories to the base desk itself. But I wanted to walk through this process step by step for you and include what it cost me for all of these pieces to give you an idea. If you're looking to build a home studio and you need a desk, you don't want to go drop a thousand dollars on a studio desk. Here's a cheaper way to do it and it's beautiful and sturdy as well. The other great thing about this is there's actually no cutting involved for the base desk. So we're just going to screw the pipe together and I'm going to show you how I'm going to do that. And then we're going to attach it to the top with just some one inch screws. So we're using these floor flanges right here. And this is what we're using to act as our foot on the floor, but also to mount to the top of the desk. There's screw holes in this flange. So it works really well for that. And the basic structure of this desk is going to be a frame that's wide enough so I can fit my Hammer 88 Pro from M Audio underneath the desk. So I've got the height of the desk a little bit taller than your average office desk so that I can slide the controller under there on a keyboard stand. I'm going to cover costs at the end of this video, but a couple of other things you're going to need for this build. I'm going to use gloves because the pipe itself, while I cleaned it, and I'll talk about that here in a minute, the Pipes themselves have some sharp burrs and stuff sometimes on the inside. And as you're handling them and screwing together, it's not only nice to have protection against those sharp burrs, but also some grip to tighten those up really tight. We're not gluing them or anything like that. They do come from the hardware store a little bit dirty. They've got some oil on them and some of them have labels. So I used just a regular old utility knife to scrape off the labels. And then I used acetone to not only take the label residue off, but to also clean the oil off the pipes. And then the other thing, we've got our two drills, one set up with a countersink bit that we're going to use to countersink our screws to attach the top to the frame. And then a screw gun, you could use one and just swap out the bits, but I have two here. So I've got some one inch screws. These I'm going to use to fasten the top. If you're wondering for my particular size desk, all the measurements, what I bought for pipe and fittings. You'll find that in the description below. So what we're going to do is we're going to start with a T. So this T is going to be the very center of our cross beam. And we're going to take two of our 10 inch and we're going to screw those into this T. Get those right in here tight. And then onto these two 10 inch, we're going to screw our couplers because we basically want to make this extend wide enough for me to slide my M Audio Hammer 88 Pro in there. Again, screw it on there nice and tight. I'm using gloves just to protect my hand and also give me a little bit of extra grip to screw that in. Now that we've got that, we're going to take two of our 18 inch pieces here. We're going to screw those into the coupler itself. Screw that right in tight. And then we're going to flip that over and we're going to do the same thing to the other side. So total, we've got two 18s, two 10s, the coupler and the T right in the middle. And then this is our crossbar. So this is going to sit at the back of the desk and this is going to start to take shape pretty quick here. So what we're going to do is we're going to take two T's and we're going to screw that into the end of our 18 inch pieces here. So now what we're going to do is we're going to take the other two 10 inch pieces. We're going to screw those on the front side of our T. And we're going to take our four inch pieces. We're going to put those on the back side of the T. 
So there we've got the basis of our bottom frame. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna put the remaining tees onto the ends and that's gonna support our vertical legs that are gonna go up and support the desk. I'm gonna screw this in, get that turned upright. And then we're just gonna take these five three inch pieces and we're gonna put these right on the bottom edge. And we're gonna put a flange into the bottom of each of these three inch tees. And the reason we have five of these is because we have a center brace, which allowed me to get just a little bit more width out of the frame, but also gave me a little support piece in the center of the footrest to support that so it doesn't sag over time. Now, the great thing about having these short pieces here is we can kind of use this as a leveling system on our desk. You can unscrew or screw these in as you need to level the desk once it's made. So now we set this on the ground and you're gonna wanna kinda do just a little bit of a leveling job here right now. The great thing is once you get all these fittings on, you can use them as leverage to kinda straighten out, get them nice and flat. So now that you're happy with how this sits on the floor, we're gonna take our four 24 inch pieces. We're gonna put those on the four corners and then we're gonna put a flange on top of each corner post. And these flanges are what we're gonna attach to the underside of our desk to secure it and keep it from sliding around. Once we've got these on, we can actually use these to help tighten up our desk a little bit more. Because we've got more leverage here, we can tighten those right down in, make sure that we've got a really nice tight fit on all of our fittings here. So the last thing I'm gonna do is just take a level and throw it on here. See if I'm happy with where that sits. Could also take a tape measure and just run that up and down measure to make sure uh, all of the legs sit about the same height. Yep, we're gonna loosen that just maybe a 16th. There we go. So now when we set our top on here, our top will be basically level because we've leveled these four flanges. So now that we have our frame built, this frame costs about $250 for all of the pipe and the fittings. Again, if you went with a three quarter, you'd probably come in a little bit less, but I liked that beefier look. I wanted something that was gonna be really sturdy. So one option if you're doing a smaller desk would be to lay the top on the floor and then flip the frame over onto the desk screw it down, which is a little bit easier, and then flip the whole thing over. Seeing as this is a really big six foot studio desk, I'm actually gonna place the top onto here, make sure it's adjusted correctly, and then screw it into place on top so I don't have to flip it over because it's just me, and this thing is gonna be really heavy when it's all said and done. So now that I've got the top unwrapped, I got a birch butcher block, and you could stain this. I'm probably gonna do a really light stain and then a coat of poly but you could also just use some sort of oil, just oil this up and keep it there. But what we're gonna do is this is the bottom, and then the top is up here. I am going to lift this onto the frame. And I'm just gonna take a look at the top, figure out which I want to be the back and what I want to be the front. And I actually wanna switch this around so that the front edge is here. Now I probably just dinged it up. But I've got this desk so that, again, my Oxygen Pro can sit underneath it. So it does sit up a little bit higher. And our next step is gonna be fastening the top to the frame itself. So grab a tape measure and measure to make sure that you've got an even amount of top on this side and an even amount on that sticking out from the frame. Same with the front and back. So I'm actually gonna have the same overhang on front and back because of the size of my frame. And then what we're gonna do is take our countersink and I put a piece of tape on here so I would know how far to screw in so I don't drill through the top. I only wanna countersink the inch of my screws. So I'm gonna go under here and I'm gonna countersink these out. And I'm gonna just do two screws per flange because we're not hanging this off the wall or anything like that. We're just trying to keep it in place, secured to our feet. And so I think two screws is enough for this case. And then we're gonna take 
our one inch screws and I'm just using drywall screws again. This is just to keep it secure. I'm not trying to mount this from a wall or anything. So go ahead and screw those in. So there you have it. This is my new studio desk. Let's go ahead and put the Hammer 88 Pro underneath here, see what it looks like and make sure everything fits. It's perfect. Wow, guys, check this out. Let's bring this over here. I wanna show you this, right? So that's my desk and this is pretty sick. So Hammer 88 Pro fits perfectly under there. So if I wanna use the controls on the Hammer 88 Pro, I do need to pull it out because I didn't want the desk to be any higher than it actually is already. And so having the desk height where it is, the Hammer 88 Pro fits perfectly underneath and I didn't wanna go any higher because I want it to be usable from here as well. So chances are I will either keep it pulled out like this if I'm doing a session and actually using all of the stuff on here or slide it in so just the keys are exposed and have another control surface up here to control my DAW. So if you made it this far, that is my studio desk, the start of it. So a couple of things, be on the lookout for an accessory video where I'm going to put mounts for my headphones on either side. I'm gonna put risers on the back for both my screen and my studio monitors. I'm gonna be picking up some new studio monitors throw me some recommendations down below. Budget recommendations or somewhere intermediate because remember this is how to build a home studio on a budget. The other thing I'm gonna be doing is a wire tray in the back and actually drilling a few holes, probably three along the back for wires to go down into the wire tray so that everything looks clean. And I'll also be doing some LED lights and stuff like that. They're super excited. I love how this turned out. I'm really excited to actually have a usable studio desk that's dedicated to the studio. And then over here, because this room is also my office for my day job, I've got a butcher block office desk as well. This was my test build. My Nord is just sitting up there until it has a more permanent location, which is probably gonna be right next to my studio desk. So one last thing I wanted to cover before we end the video is cost. So I promised I'd talk about this. The butcher block top was around $200 and the frame cost me about $250. So all said and done, it was about $450 for the desk as it stands now. Of course, I'm gonna add the risers, the wire tray on the bottom, couple of accessories, the LED lights. I'll cover those costs in that video, but all said and done, this is still gonna be a lot cheaper than buying a studio desk this big. This is a six foot wide studio desk. Buying one like that would be pretty expensive. So. Hopefully this was great for you. If you're looking to build a studio desk and you want something that's sturdy, budget friendly, check out this option. I didn't cut anything. I just screwed it together, screwed it to the top and we're off to the races. If you've got questions, throw them in the comments below. Again, give me your recommendations for studio monitors. I'm gonna be getting a pair of those for here. So I wanna hear what you guys think there. Thanks for watching. Stay inspired and keep making that music.